Do you see a book? Yeah, I see a book. Go on, sign that book. All right. <laughs> but I can't... I can't write my name. I'll help you. I'll help you. Well, you've not off. even... You've not even got hands, you've just got hooves. Oh, well. I'll change it to human form. Why are you not just in human all the time? <laughs> I like being a goat. You see what I battered your dad? <laughs> I saw that. Why'd you do that? I just... I've had it off of him. Wanted to put ram him into wood, sh wood shelves. Actually, I didn't mean for to kill him, though, because I, 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 I was actually... I was just messing. As you can see, I am Maud Corden. I am Boom. Pip Corden. Boom. 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 Would you Boom. like to say the name of the character or would you like to sing the song? Um, I will sing the song. Boom. Stars, the stage and screen. McGraw and Beck Philip. A crown grows out his head. Stars of stage and screen. McGraw and Beck Philip. Silent vicious penguin. Stars of stage and screen. <laughs> McGraw and Black Philip. Oh nanny queen is wet. Stars of stage and screen. McGraw and Black Philip. Taking hostages and using violence without hesitation. Black Philip. Feathers McGraw, stars of stage and screen. McGraw and Black Philip, King of Sea and Land, stars of stage and screen. McGraw and Black Philip, Anti Gromit, stars of stage and screen. McGraw and Black Philip, Uncle Black Philip and Lightning McGraw eats the lions, stars of stage and screen. Exactly. Boo. Happy Halloween. Mo. Located at the furious edge of the trouble belt here on the thirtieth the thirty first of October. Ching. I am two six one two six two six. And I am one five six one four one four. We are holographic two packs, abbas and aces of bases. Tuning into radio frequencies of the ether. We took a quantum trip to Earth. Seriously, we did. And snagged Arf. these DVDs of the Vavitch and Vivolich and Gagromit. What in the digital universe are McGraw and Black Phillip? The Earthlings call the spoilers. Tonight's holographic guest, a star of stage and screen, identity unknown. Another area of the cosmic universe unlocked. A mysterious cloud of ethereal energy was sensed on the ship. Did you feel it, 1-5? I did not. Or maybe I did, 2-6. You're most welcome. Thank you. Let us tech investigate. Get into your bubble. Now we okay, are in bubbles. While we're getting into our bubbles, um, Black Phillip, eh? Enigmatic 210 pound goat called Charlie as a scapegoat and representation of devil. He had the biggest horns among the goats, said Anna Kilch. Goats just don't grow bigger horns than that. Have you ever seen a emu with three bloody feet? Black Phillip's unpredictable behaviour was noted by director Robert Eggs. If we wanted him to do something violent, he wanted to go to sleep. If he was supposed to be standing still, he was running around like a madman. Charlie was difficult. Actor Ralph Innocent was injured by Charlie. I didn't have a lot of gas in the tank from the moment we set eyes on Charlie. It was hate at first sight. He had two modes chilling out, doing nothing or attacking me. On the fourth day, Charlie rammed his serrated horns into Innocent's ribs, dislodging a tendon which left him in pain for the rest of the shoot. Oh, Finchy. Um, what, what, what is he in, Innocent? Was he in Coronation Street? The Office is oh, what right. I predominantly remember him from. But um, almost all British stuff um ranging from like what the early 2000s to the to the 2018s and then he moved over he moved over to the big leagues now he's galactus he's it's the actually galactus he is isn't he i forgot about that <laughs> yeah um which is fun but happy halloween black philip and a penguin what could connect these two creatures who knows why do this episode who knows who knows what's uh, what's your thoughts on black pit where do you put him in the in the rankings of the best so says the best stars of script age and screen. Oh yes, we've not done a ranking, have we? Um, I like him. I think he's uh Delicious. interesting. Yes, I think it's a good way to introduce a goat into a movie. Um, 
I can't think of any other movie goats right now. Nope, me neither. Bambi, is Bambi a goat? Almost. Babe, goat in the city. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, I just wanted to look at, I thought Black Phillip was a, a great character in that movie. And the fact that he's spoilers, he just doesn't, he's just a goat for like four fifths of the movie, which is um, Spoiler, intriguing. Though, he is Satan in disguise. And uh, yes. that night, the witch suckles blood from a goat and abducts the twins. Yes, the Vivitch. And then in the morning, William Finchie finds the twins clothing and the other goats slaughtered. And then, as we will find out later, Black Philip does some bad stuff. Helen's a baby bitch. Helen is. <laughs> um, more scenes with the goat were planned but were scrapped due to poor training. Imagine Black Philip doesn't work well with other goats or Charlie yeah. or whatever he or goes by. Or animals or humans. And he has, he has um, round pupils indicating he is not truly a goat. Indeed. Um, As opposed to the rectangular pupils of regular goats. For the violent scene between William and Black Philip, Eggers avoided CGI and commissioned a puppet version of the goat, but both but... attempts, a half-sized puppet and a large cow-sized puppet flowed in from LA were deemed failures. And here is a Black Philip in human form. Yes, kind of looking strangely like Feathers McGraw in his stance and shape. A little bit. More Feathers than McGraw, isn't I he? I can see it. He is, we'll come to feathers in a minute, but I can see a similar trajectory or a similar um, kind of backstory for feathers and the, the Satan. Oh yeah, so he's from the movie The, the, the Vich, which is set in the 16-something, 1630s in New England, and it's goddamn scary, goddamn movie. It I is couldn't scary... even get. I couldn't even watch the whole thing the first time. I stopped and I put it away and I didn't watch the second half for like two <laughs> years. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I liked the um, eerie setting. I don't mind a horror film. My favourite kind of horror films are woods-based horror films. Oh, yeah. Folk horror, as we call them sometimes. Yeah, go folk yourself. Um, so I, I, I um, enjoyed it, other than the sort of grimness of the general plot. Oh, it's very grim. It's very grim from beginning to end. It's it's not. It's even less grim than uh, M Night Shyamalan's The Village, which I imagine is your second best movie. No, I have um, only seen that once. I I don't care about um, villages. That's forest based. It is forest based. You're right. I have seen it actually. Yeah, it's the one with the forest. Don't um, give the spoiler away. Spoilers. And obviously, uh, Lost, which is my first favorite. First favorite forest in there. And we are now in our, our spaceship, 26, and we're floating through the holographic displays and corridors uh, in our translucent traveling bubbles like playful spirits. I love these V8.6 bubbles. Look 15. Oh, look 15. It feels like we're in a giant jellyfish. This is great. Oh. This is the best Halloween ever. Spiraling nearby, totally two six, and everything is just so normal. Let's slide down this wiggly corridor with walls pulsing and colourful lights and holographic flickers. What's that residue on the floor? What's this? A glowing mess. Oh, examining the floor's strange symbols that shimmer with energy. It must be an ethereal cloud that's parted too hard. Classic. Let's get out let's get out of this room and go to the next room. Oh, I'm zooming into a chamber filled with fantastic devices. A hollow matrix display that throws images around like confetti, a gravity modulator, and a bioreactor. Giggle. Just your average Tuesday Halloween. Hollow Matrix. Great for pranks. I love pranks. Pick or treat. Examining the bioreactor is probably brewing some funky energy smoothies. Oh my goodness, is that a dimensional rift generator? It sure is. It can tear space time. I wonder if it can make tacos. Uh -huh. Not how you uh -huh. eat taco <laughs> Only one way to find out, but first let's check these weird glyphs all over the floor. Let's. It's like a treasure map. We might find the ghost of the ethereal cloud. Wink. Wink. Or maybe just more wacky inventions. Let's keep exploring. Yes, let's bubble bounce around into the next corridor. Ready for more <laughs> hilarious surprises. While we're doing that, why don't we talk about the other person that we're focusing on today, which is Feathers McGraw, a silent villainous penguin and the first true antagonist in the Wallet and Gromit franchise. Oh, Wallet and Gromit. <laughs> I was actually, because I saw this as a child, more scared of the penguin than the goat. <laughs> Feathers was more intimidating to me than Philip at the time and I think the silence helps which is one of our biggest links I should I'll, I'll note now that I just wanted initially I had no intention of comparing these two characters that isn't why this cast exists I just wanted to cover them both in one episode for Halloween and then 
as it went on, I realised that they were actually fairly similar. Indeed. Black Phillip's an obvious Halloween choice. The the criminal penguin less so. Now, I'm not doubting uh, you at all here. Feathers stays calm and focused, never letting emotions cloud his judgment, even during anxiety or rage. He exhibits yes. sociopathic traits such as taking hostages and using violence without hesitation. He also disguises himself disguises himself as a chicken with a red rubber glove on his head, which he successfully uses to fool both Wallace and the police, the Wigan <laughs> authorities. <laughs> his intelligence rivals Gromit, and he demonstrates advanced technological skills by modifying the techno trousers. With a remote control. His plan ultimately is to steal a diamond from a museum. Indeed, um, yeah. And in a, a thing called Project Zoo, he captures baby animals to manipulate their parents as part of a scheme to take over the zoo and create a diamond mine. Is that a real thing? Which, apparently, according to your notes, yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's real or that's just made up. Well, it could be. A, I, I wouldn't surprise me if it was a little short for children in need or something. I haven't checked on the... What about the other children? What? What about, what about the other children? Did they not get one? What children? <laughs> the ones that are not in need. Oh, no. No, um, ones that have everything. Te technically, all children were in need of a second Feathers McGraw appearance. So it's a game. It's an Xbox game. Oh, I see. That's fine then. I guess rescue the baby animals in typical platform game style. That's quite a good idea. He's quite a good, similar to how they use Poochie in the Simpsons game as a villain for a level. Um, oh yeah. But he is set to return this. I believe this year. I believe They're so. Doing a, a new thing. Yes. Avengers Most Foul. Thirty-one years after his debut. Which is a heck of a, a heck of a weight. Yeah. It's almost like Blade. Do you reckon um, we'll see Black Phillip too in, in 2086? The Vitches. Hopefully. The Vitches. Oh, I, it I, is, I, that's I, it, isn't it? That's exactly what we get. Twisters. I hope we um, get a Black Phillip HBO prequel starring Chalamet. Oh, yeah. As well, Definitely. As well as Locker, so. <laughs> Chalamet prequel. Chalamet I'd as well. Ask, as I'd ask Bing to do it, but it just will not do Chalamet as Black Phillip. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I would, um, yeah, I would argue that in terms of culturally, Feathers probably had a bigger impact on the British uh, viewing audience than Philip just because of timing. Oh, yeah. Like, I think of Black Phillip, if the, if the Vivich had been released like a year after the Blur Vivich. Yeah. Then I think Black Phillip would have been a, what you call like a horror icon, maybe. Like the, like the Terrifier, like that clown. Well, that was my only example I was going to give of a modern one. The, somebody who's sort of broken through into like the Jason Michael Myers Kruger world. But I think Black Phillip would have been in that world had his movie come out when people were slightly more shockable. Oh yeah, Saw. But Saw is not really like that same kind of villain, right? Seen. That's the, that's the, seed. Um, that's the a flashback seed. movie. A seed, you'll prequel, Chalamet prequel, Seed. As a nearly um, flawless tactician, it takes a genius to outwit him. It does. It, it's definitely, we'll come into it with the clips, but it seems it's definitely, actually, no, it's inconclusive because nobody tries to take down Black Phillip, but it's it's definitely a harder fight to capture feathers, but Phillip remains at large, so that's probably why. Yeah, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a, a statement and you have to tell me whether it is um, just Black Phillip, just Feathers, or both? Indeed. Antagonist. Both. Correct. Representation of evil. Both. Not really. Comedic villain. Feathers. Communicates through silent seduction. Both. Gestures and humour. Feathers. In fact, no, both. Explores deep themes of temptation and greed. Yes, both. Correct. Embodying sin and the supernatural. Both. Physical presence as 210 pound goat. Feathers. <laughs> uses, disguises himself as a human and uses props like a hat to carry out his plans. Both. Yeah, he says here that only Feathers does that. Like, clearly Black Phillip does that. <laughs> yes, uh, take leads, that chat box. Leads Thomas into a coven of witches. I believe as of now, just Philip. But we don't know what's going to happen in the, <laughs> in the sequel this year. Orchestrates a heist involving a train. Again, as of now, just Feathers. All right, All right shall we, we do... Not? Well, that's it. That takes us to content. We're not you're not used to getting to content within the first hour. But here we go. We're already there. We're flying and, through. It's what, like I'm not prepared. What's um? It's like there's not pages and pages of scripts and sponsors. Indeed, no sponsor race finale this week because I didn't no. finish it. Well, also we're we're in space. This is the sauces. Yes, I don't even know what a sponsor race is. It wouldn't wouldn't have featured in this anyway. Two six. What it makes no sense. What you're saying makes no sense even in binary. 
Precisely. Click one. Land of the, the guy and city. The Vavrong Trousers, 1993. Bromit Dog is looking at Wallace Mann in Wigan House, taking it to someone 20 quid a week, including breakfast. A skinny penguin with a suitcase approaches the stirs. Gromit is watching him closely and knitting. The penguin trunks his beady eyes, his beady black eyes at Gromit, who is taking aback. Penguin stirs at him until Gromit gulps. Wallace says, um, do you like kippers? I am partial to black pudding. The penguin stirs for a while and then silently heads upstairs, lodge of fear. Cut to Wallace showing penguin dingy room with a bed and peeling wallpaper. It's a bit something, but it's amazing what a lick of paint will do. A picture falls off the wall and Penguin runs away. He runs into Wallace's room and sits on the bed. Oh no, that's not what we had in mind. But it's too late. McGee is already in nice room. Settling himself into Wallace's bed and packing, unpacking his tiny suitcase. Wallace's room, or is it Gromit's, has blue, blue bones, wallpaper and tennis racket. I repeat. Wallace is saying, no pets. Does that suit you? He's a penguin. He, he, I say. The dartboard has darts all around it, but not in it. McGee turns on the radio and tie a yellow ribbon is on. He ignores Wallace and reclines deliciously on his bed. Wallace remarks, seems pleasant enough, but he does not think so, really. Aye, aye, lad, as Wallace, the Wallace would say. Um, what a solid introduction to a character. What a what a little sass master he is. I <laughs> like that he is sassy. I'm, I'm under the impression that he can speak. Man, you grommet can't, can he? No. And I was just thinking that he chooses not to speak to, um, because he doesn't feel like they deserve his words. I think that would be the case if he could speak. Um, he's on a mission. I also like that he's deeply focused, so he has no time to um, no time for pleasantries. No. He's simply he's simply using it's very matter of fact in like a I don't know like emotionless way or when you sort of get like a like a non empathetic person. But this one is a penguin. So he pen is. Yeah, he's here to do a job. He's not here to talk to this man or this dog. No. And he's also not going to stay in the shitty room. He immediately <laughs> makes the decision to... Um, it's almost like if this wasn't Wallace's house, if this was a different person's house, he still would have done this. Oh, he would yeah. have just walked. It doesn't matter that it is, um, you know, like for rent, etc. Like he would have gone where he wanted to go and he wouldn't have um, bothered with an explanation for it. Oh, he takes no prisoners to his feathers. No, and it immediately sets up that he's going to be a problem for Gromit. Yeah, and, immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Which is a shame, because uh, Gromit really has no... He doesn't actually need to dislike Wallace and Gromit. He just simply needs to get those trousers, which he finds out about, and steal his diamond. So it would have been more tropey to go down the road of, oh, he's a lovely penguin. Oh, no, he's got a, he's doing something bad behind our back. Yeah, Whereas exactly this, right. He's not interested in them not knowing what he's doing. No, he's very good. He just he just walks in. He has absolutely no interest in them. He's just super mean, and he just says, "I'm taking this room." Um, there's an um, episode of Father Ted where the a priest comes to stay, and the guy who just um, takes over Father Jack's chair takes over the room and starts playing jungle drum and bass music at three o'clock in the morning as loud as he can. Do you remember yes. that one? Vaguely, yeah. It reminds me of that, that just like the lodger comes to stay and the lodger just immediately takes over and does whatever they want. Yes, but I also like that in this particular case, he isn't doing anything silly. He's not come to be like, he's not comic come relief. to be the comic Yeah, he's not here for the comic relief. He's here to do a serious job and he is going to get what he wants and he is not afraid of confrontation, clearly. Here's the question, though. So, it, it, he didn't know about the trousers before he arrived, right? I don't believe so. I believe he is just staying here uh, because it is a bed and breakfast and he needs access to a local B &B. Wigan Diamond facility. Because as we, as we have not yet discussed, this is set in Wigan, a right. place we visited. place we once heard about. Yes. Voiced by Peter Salis, right, who was... Um, he, I don't know, was he was he a Yorkshireman, Salis? Because he was well known for for being in um, Last of the Summer Wine, right? No, is that not born, Salis? He was born in Twickenham. Yeah, oh, no, but was, I don't no, think it, I just Southgate. assumed he'd grown up in um, in the north because he does such a, a good northern accent, and he, and he's in Last of the Summer Wine doing a Yorkshire accent. It's almost like he knew what he was doing before he got into the business. Indeed, uh, 
No, he is. Salas simply... married Elaine Usher. However, it was a turbulent relationship with Usher leaving him 16 times before they divorced in 1965 in rounds of desertion. <laughs> <laughs> they eventually reconciled and continued to live together until 1999. <laughs> Salas. Um, voice of Wallace. Enough, he, he was just um, a, a damn good actor. He did the I voice. Who's taking over. Somebody else must be doing the voice then, in this, unless they're doing a just a Feathers McGraw. AI, Story what's it called? Project. Is he dead? I didn't even know he's sick. <laughs> Maybe he did it before he passed away. Maybe. Maybe they've had, they've had this audio in the bag for eight years. Ben Whitehead? Oh, yes, of course. Who's Everybody's favourite. The guy from ben... Phoenix Nights. Is he? No, it's that this guy. guy. I don't know him. Me neither. I'm suspicious. We'll give him a chance, though. Give yeah, we'll give him a go. Give him a go, just in case he's a Wiganer. Um... We yeah, have solid introduction to Feathers and also dissimilar to Philip in this one in that his intentions are clear immediately. Philip kind of goes down the other route that we said about the trope of Philip's just a goat that lives with the family. He's still a bit of an arsehole, but he's just a goat that lives it's with the family. literally Satan. Well, they don't, yeah, but they. She, until the last moments of the movie, they are all under the impression that this is simply just a naughty goat. Whereas with, <laughs> Isn't with Satan Penguin, really just a naughty goat at the best of times? Exactly. In many ways. Um, but the penguin, McGraw, is immediately... Like, they're immediately onto him. Well, Wallace isn't, because Wallace is just... Daft. Awesome. But Gromit is... Um, Gromit is already... He's ready to see the worst in him. And a lot of these clips don't cover it, but essentially, Gromit leaves. Gromit leaves the house. Right. And, like, moves out because of the penguin. So I, I don't know if there's a conflict yeah. between W and G. If one of those a way to find out. Exactly. I simply didn't have the twenty-eight minutes to watch the whole thing. It is that he 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 um, the penguin basically sidles up to Wallace and makes himself more useful than Gromit, I think. And Gromit takes the hint and gets out of the, which again is another trope, right? It's a classic lodger or third person making themselves more, um, you know, more necessary than the current partner. Indeed. Did you say third person or bird person then? Because both apply in this Coffee situation. Coco. Goony goo goo. What's he say? Quanch. Quanch. What does he say? Is it, is it uh, Yabba Dabba Ding Dong? Oh, yeah, I can't remember. But it means I'm in great pain, right? Yeah, it's in something that... person language. Yeah. No, I can't remember. I've just got Shabba Goo in my head, which is Mint Merry Crunch. <laughs> what is the sharp ace? Bubba Lubba Dub Dub. Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought you meant uh, bird persons. Is that where it comes from? Well, he says wobble up a dub dub, and then he says in my uh, like, and Rick's been saying it for like three seasons or something, and then they talk yeah. to bird person, um, and bird person says it means I am in great pain. Please help me in um, in, in, in bird, bird person bird. language. He says, yeah. Um, initially, it seems to be an expression of Rick's happiness. As bird person likes to explain, it translates to I'm in great pain. Please help me. Excellent. If we what would you think? Would you think this would work less if McGraw made noises? Oh, it's exactly. perfect. No, it's perfect. The character designs are awesome. He's he's tiny and cute, but also menacing at the same time. And um, you know, it's a classic heel turn. You're like, what's funny, though, is they don't just stick with him being a penguin. He also puts a rubber glove on his head and becomes a chicken, which is worth his... Is yeah. is the classic move? It's absolutely brilliant as a as a bad guy. He is. He comes in and just does arguably more villainous things than Philip, who just sort of lets things unfold in a satanic way. In like more in a just curious... like a witch take a baby and 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 eat it and use its juices to fly. Exactly. I would argue that, <laughs> that that's worse. I, I would argue that what the witch does is worse. <laughs> Philip is simply using his. It's kind of like let, let's go back to Lost. Um, yes, let's. When they, they just observe people to see if all people will eventually go bad, and then when they do, he just picks Probably. a witch. Oh, they do. But um, yeah. Philip, Philip could have Philip could have shown his hand a lot earlier in the movie and just dealt with the entire family, but he clearly chooses to let them all turn against each other first. Oh yeah. Well, let's move on to clip two then. Clip two: The Vich and Philip, twenty fifteen. Two chubby, big clothed pit children, Jonas and Mercy, are dancing and chasing the goat around the farmyard. They are singing "Black Philip, Black Philip." Uh, a crown grows out his head. Black Philip, Black Philip, to nanny queen is wed. Jump to the fence post, running in the stall. Black Philip, Black Philip, king of all. Black Philip, Black Philip, king of sky and land. Black Philip, Black Philip, key of sea and sand. We are ye servants. We are ye men. Black Philip eats the lions from the lions' den. I was on. Quora, 
a sentence that nobody really should ever say. Um, and uh, it, somebody asked what the lyrics were to the song, and Eggers himself had typed them in. And I know because wow. he had the blue tick. Eggers on Quora, eh? Who would have thought? Um, I hate these two little shits. <laughs> they I are very they're... irritating. Yeah, I think they're the they're obviously the driving force of the film in terms of like later on. Like they're more sort of Philip adjacent than Anya Taylor Joy, Thomas than Thomas. And um Well, yeah, because they're so easy, they're so susceptible, right? So the the youngest children they're easier to tempt and essentially uh, this the suggestion is that he's been talking to them right from the very start. Yes, I imagine at this point now, after this scene, he probably sets them straight. Like we will, let, will, there'll be no more of that. There'll be no more running around chasing me. I'm Satan. <laughs> Satan okay. wants a rest. Satan needs a nap. Maybe he's um. He is. Maybe he's what? Maybe he's, he enjoys it. I mean, he's a goat, right? So yes, he's Satan, but he's also a goat. So maybe he does like the goat things. Well, I was going to say that. What is the what is the um like the ratio of goat to Satan? Like, well, is he... it just like a goat costume? Just like later, he gets a human costume. Is a, is 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 he human? Is he goat? Is he something else? Exactly, the killers. Um, <laughs> he he also it could just be that Philip is a regular goat that Satan has access to possession of, so that Philip could in, in this scene, Philip could well just be a goat acting like a goat thing without the Satan mindset, and then late at night, in let's say the witching hour. Aye. Satan has access to Black Phillip's mind, and maybe it works like that. I like that it's not established. All we know is that this goat definitely is sick. Well, also, at the means... beginning, it says a, a New England folk tale or fairy tale, so the idea is even within it, it's like, it's not supposed to be real. It's supposed to be a, a Red Riding Hood-style tale of, um, you know, kind of a warning to the to the people who aren't good boys and girls. Yes, which I very much like. And I like that, um, depending on how you look at it as well, Philip isn't necessarily the, the antagonist of the movie. No, of course not. He is actually the, I, I guess this is how he gets people, but he is actually the provider of the only joy that... Um, and that Anna Taylor. Yes, that Anna Taylor experiences. Except for her own personal surname, Joy. That's a little thing we call temptation. That's that's what the devil does best. He comes up and he says, "Oh, would you like to live deliciously?" And you say yes, and he says, "Give me your soul." The end. Well, that, yes, that, but that's how he works. He, he does, and he's got her in a real pickle here because she hasn't really got a reason to say no. She's currently like without without Black Phillips' intervention at the end, she simply would have died in that house of starvation. Well, we don't know how far she is from the actual, um, the main crew, right? So, like, let's say that if this all was real and she was the last surviving member, there, there's, an, there's a possibility she could have um, made the journey if it was only a day or two. Yes, but there's absolutely no way those people would have let her back if she turned oh, yeah. up covered in blood, saying that a witch had killed the rest of her family. <laughs> And she well, was one would, one would one. have to give her a little bit more credit than that. She'd have to have a wash and not mention the witch for at least I a think, couple of days. I think if they if this family went so they were all, they were kicking this family out of the um, village at the start. The reason they're on their own is because they got kicked out of the village for being sort of too flashy. No, the the father he's all to blame, right? It's everything. Like, that's the whole story. Like he he's the one who get them into that, and so the mother's like against that, and the kids had no real say in it. So I think that I think she'd be okay. I just make the assumption that they're too far away that they went like several days travel. Let's do that. No, it actually, nice. it doesn't make any sense because they would have been well out of New England if they'd gone several days travel. So, so no, they, I think um, she could have done it. They do like they've got the the silk. There's definitely something about them being the sort of like they get kicked out. They, they're basically impoverished because of um, yeah. I think it's mostly Vinci, but sort of like living to Ned and Maud would love it. The living they're too puritanical. I think basically they were saying that the that the that the group that had lost its morals and lost its way, and they wanted to live more pure and more you know in the in the way that uh, you know and that's that's the thing, right? That that's why living deliciously, especially for those guys, is such a beautiful thing because they were so puritanical and frugal that uh, they were they were primed for a little bit of devilry. I see. Yes, I'll go back and look. I know there's definitely something with that silver cup because they sell the silver cup, don't they? And like 
was a big thing. I read something about it being like, you know, things like that would have made them like the, the affluent. Really? Family. Okay. There's, there's definitely something about them. Yeah, we're both right. They, they get kicked out because he um, is not bragging. Overly puritanical, yes. Yeah. So basically, oh. they were they were kind of um, suggesting that everybody else was kind of letting, um, like letting oh, the were, side down. I see. I thought it. I knew that they were shitting on the, the rest of the people in like a smug way, weren't they? But I thought it was in a smug sort of. We're pretending to be Puritan, but we have all this nice stuff. So get out of our town and go and live in the woods and see how nice your stuff is there. Yeah. But I believe you're right. It's a, it's grim. It's a great film, though. It's a, I'm saying I've told you this before, right? So I watched it in what 2019 or whatever, and and didn't and was too scared to watch the whole thing. Then went back to Vermont to a summer camp in the woods and was oh, yeah. given and was given my own cabin in the woods, like 500 meters away from everybody else. So like way back into the woods, surrounded by woods, a cabin with no electricity where I then had to go and sleep, like literally in the same part of the world this film had happened in those, in the, in the woods. I was absolutely terrified. I was absolutely terrified for the entire summer. It was that grim. It does, does seem like a bad time to rewatch it. It also gives you the unique perspective of, and this is probably the only time this has happened through it, it definitely is actually, but you have lived in both places that these characters yeah. have lived. I mean, this is New England. I don't know where about if it mentions, like which parts. New England is, is pretty big, right? And I believe it was actually filmed in Canada, but, um, you know, they do a really good job of... Um, so he's from New Hampshire, which is the next, you know, next one along to um, from Vermont, up there with Maine. Exactly. I... Beautiful place, though, but yeah, kind of a uh, little bit scary if you're, if you're out there in the in the woods by yourself. Exactly. Clip three. I can see. I can see that being a, a bit of a terror. We haven't done clip two at all. This is, this is clear. You've read all that, but we haven't. Um, you write. You read the song and then talked about Eggers, and then we moved. All right. J J um, John, John, John and Mercy come hither. A.T. Joy's accent is is amazing. It is amazing. Like I, I'd never seen her before. I didn't know anything about her, and, and, and like she's got a like a Yorkshire accent, basically, like spot on. Like I was amazed. I mean, I think she is part English, right? I think the tail apart. Yeah. Um, so she's shoveling hair in the barn and the creepy, creepy children are singing the song. And of course I asked, where did they learn that song? We zoom in on a slightly, uh, on, on, on Thomas and who's frozen as she hears the song and she's now deep in the thought, does she already know something? And Philip's out there bucking wild as Ralph and his son arrive. Gruff voice, Ralph says, get back in there, you two, get in, get back, you two. And he puts his gun down. Some scary shit as BP rears up in his back legs. Ralph's, Ralph faces Pip and they circle each other. I said, did they edit some delicious things into this? Or is it just straight up? Like, did they CGI some, like, satanic bits in? Very so weak like, palette. It's like the goat was just ready for these kind of scenes. <laughs> no, what I mean, like, the, sometimes you see his horns and they do look like they're, like, glowing or something. Or you see some suggestion of, like... And they've obviously mixed in lots of sounds and stuff in the background that would kind of dis disorientate you at times. Ralph in his sunny leathers gets pit back in the pen, but is knocked on his arse, much to the joy of the demonic children. Beautiful. Did you make you made two puns then, and I don't know if you made either of them on purpose. Because the guy's name is Ralph Innocent, and you, oh, said yeah, yeah, Ralph, yeah. you said Ralph and his son, and then you said Ralph and his sonny. <laughs> no, neither of those were intentional. <laughs> well, I couldn't remember the name of the character. The character's name is William, right? I think so, yeah. I just, I just whatever he's in, I call him Finchie, which is unfair, <laughs> really, because he played that role like in two episodes in like 2002. Um, I'm sure you won't take it too badly. No, I like this scene, and I like that... Um, a couple of things have just come to mind with it. I always thought the kids made the song up themselves based on having interacted with Black Phillip as Satan at this point. But I saw it as like, a, that isn't a, that's just their way of making entertainment because they've got literally nothing else to do. I didn't know, I didn't think it was already, because I can't see the entire, there's not really a reason for this song to exist because it's their goat. So it's just sort of, I can see them sort of making up a, you know, just making up a song about the pet goat or the yeah. family goat. 
But then I think the look that she gives is because she's real. She's basically listening to the lyrics. She's basically thinking, oh, this doesn't... All of this sounds very um, ungodly. Like you're declaring some... You're declaring this go as the, you know, false idol. Oh, yeah, it's That's brutal. The... And it's a really weird and wacky thing for little children to sing it, like if they hadn't got it from somewhere. That's the way I thought. It's like six and seven-year-olds are not making that up. Well, yeah, normally, yeah, I would. But I think my timeline is that, because I check back as well, like this is the first Black Phillips scene. There is okay. no, like, you can hear a goat um, when, the, when they initially get kicked out of the village. At the yeah. Start and they leave, you can hear a goat like bleating as they're leaving, but from what I can tell, you can't see the goat. So I didn't know if they got the goat. I didn't know if they got Philip after leaving the village or whether he was already part of the, you know, family unit and whether, like, because if that's the case, he could have been speaking to them since they were, like, able to speak. And it would make a lot of sense. Like, even little things, like, they're both quite chubby, and, like, that could that could be a child thing, but we are dealing with a Could be feeding him butter, couldn't he? Could be giving him loads of butter on the sly. Yeah, that's when they seem relatively happy. They don't seem as malnourished as the rest of the family. They seem in better... They're obviously children, but they're not often scared in the way that... Like, these two kids could have been terrified of the entire situation, the fact that, oh, we, we live in the woods now. I don't but know how it to... works with children, though, because, like, obviously they're baptised, and that's why there was a big problem with the baby, because he went before he was baptised. Um, but those kids are baptised, so you would imagine that is enough to kind of uh, mean that, that Satan can't get to them, like, easily. I don't know the rule of it, because when you, when you get baptised, and this is really bonkers, actually, it's one of the only times in my life where it, this is this kind of nonsense so you when you're getting your kids baptized you literally have to say something like i will defend these children against satan that's literally like one of the lines you have to say it is and hopefully you will um give me best lad one day in the battle you have we, we saw satan in that modcast program um yeah there's there's a, the kind of idea either way he's been i think at this point he is already speaking to them but they don't have the concept of him being satan they okay. just they have they know he's not a goat but maybe they're too young they're just taking his black phillips word like black phillip when he appears later and speaks doesn't say hey i'm satan but he never still... they're, they're never scared of him right there's no point where he's revealed and then they're terrified no he's like this he seems to be playing with them but i think towards the end when he gets on his hind legs i think he probably would have killed them both and yes. moved on to anya taylor joy do I think know... he's just hedging his bets with all the kids. Like right. one of these might be a witch. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just open it up to the youngest ones first and just kind of work through all the kids and whichever one works works. So what if for example he was already working with them in the when they were in the group before they left, um why them? Why them or why yeah, them? Yeah, why 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 that family? Um maybe because of the it would be good to, if they're the ones that are saying, we love God so much, you are all not doing a good enough job. Sure. It, that would be like the, the gold prize, wouldn't it, for Black Phillip? That would be exactly. like, maybe, maybe he just loves a challenge. Oh, that would be, that would do the most damage to God. Yeah, good, good yeah. answer. I believe, I, I agree. Um, yeah, I think Philip would have probably taken those two kids out there if it wasn't for Ralph, maybe that was Philip's plan. Maybe the, the plan was to lull the two youngest kids into a false sense of security, take them out as well, and then sort of... He's able to manipulate everything. Like, even just speaking to these two youngest kids now is setting this... It sets the entire rest of the film in motion because this little girl then goes and says that she's the witch, which then comes... Like, only, like, joking around, but it comes back later as an actual accusation. And... um no fear of this, even after the baby's been kidnapped, no fear of themselves being kidnapped by the witch. Like, she's still just, sort of, like, titting around in the, like, on the outskirts of the woods, parent looks at one point. Yeah. He's simply I don't know if it's, if it's particularly clear. Um, yeah, lots of people asking the same question. Was he always Satan, or did did, did um, Satan possess Black Philip uh, partially? But again, being um, like if you go into just general stories, like folk stories, it would it would be more likely that the devil just possessed Philip once the family had been 
exiled and were on their own near the near the forest he would possess yeah it's kind of a it's a weird turn because it's like they already have the witch and the witch already is a is enough of a threat of a threat in a in a in a storybook fashion so you think hansel and gretel they have the witch they don't need to throw satan in there it's almost like it's well, it's kind of much it's too much for me it's maybe philip's proximity to the witches because again you see at the end there's like 50 of them there's not one witch in the woods oh, there's a bunch of them yeah there's loads of them and he's obviously just go going around and doing this to uh... well they're agents of satan and that's the whole point of the witchcraft isn't it the witches are especially in that uh, area which is the salem witch trials coming up and things like that they yeah, are so accused of being agents of satan so but he is just out there recruiting so the, the whole thing of this is the witches are specifically satan orientated in this they're not just you know oh, we have we have powers and some of us are good and some of us are bad it is very specifically we operate because satan gives us things Oh, and, um, yeah, he's that's... essentially just a traveling recruiter from from the maybe like maybe he just from the looks of things he goes from family to family doing this and he's getting away with it because there's no thing there's no news yeah be it's careful simply watch thy livestock for satan might be in them exactly but um yeah i like to stick to the idea that philip is available whenever satan needs him to be but he can also act as a goat and I do think that at this point, where they're, where they're running around singing, mm. they've already got some kind of close conversational friendship with Philip. But I think they've made this song up, and they they know enough information about the goat to have made this song up. At Possibly. This point. So he but... is working overtime at night. I think. Yeah. It's also it's sort of like I get it when they're in the shed towards the end, like when she speaks to him when everybody else is dead. Yeah. But in this context, when is Philip speaking to these kids? Because they don't live in the shed with the goat, and it seems odd that he would just be doing it in the middle of the day, like why everybody else is just going about their business. Like, it, like come here, come here a minute, come here, come here a minute. <laughs> Did you just speak, goat? Yeah. That's you. That's weird. That. Don't worry. I've got some snacks for you. Uh, a song. Do you want some butter? Oh, I, love, I love some butter, me. Um, come play with us, Black Philip, forever and ever. Um, I don't want to spoil the end of the movie too much, but we we don't really find out what happens to the twins, though, right? No, they go missing, and I still, I'm still i under some, some vague illusion that they had already got their witch packs written in, and that they simply went and joined the witches. It's children, surely they don't want children in their witch pack. Maybe liability. They, it is a bit of a liability, but it also gives them the chance to raise witches in the you know, they they'll be completely opinionless essentially if they can indoctrinate them now. Easy to essentially indoctrinate. What they were, yeah, the other way it's like the flip of what the family were doing with, with God and stuff. They're gonna take these two children and teach them everything at this age now, so it's in the yeah, and they, and maybe they will start questioning it when they're like a bit older, but they'll be able to fly. So yeah, Black Philip the led them away though, right? So that's the last thing we really see: Black Philip taking them somewhere. So we don't really know what happens, but yeah, we might make that assumption. I don't. I think he just. I don't think he did, did take away them away. I think he just, he's, they're just gone in the morning, aren't they? He takes Anya Taylor Joy away at the end. Oh yeah, they. But I imagine that sure. was. I imagine that was what happened. Either that or they. They have also been used to make flying no, juice. They can do because the reason the baby worked, and that's absolutely good, and that sets the star right from the start. You know you're in trouble once that happens. Um, the the baby's unbaptized. That's why that works. I think exactly. I did it last night actually. In terms of, I've never you you never really... you, you used the <laughs> juice for un unbaptized baby to fly. Yeah, it was what it was like. Yeah, it was Wednesday, wasn't it? No, I, yeah, um, I get mine like, off. I, I get mine. Uh, mine's a synthetic baby juice off uh, Amazon.com. Oh, vegan. Um, exactly. Baby, baby vapes. Um, <laughs> no, I, I very rarely switch films off, and I say watching Terrifier three. Oh, and I yeah. did like I did twenty minutes, and was like, no, I'm I'm good for tonight. But in in a, in a humorous like this, if you going so far with it that you that you're laughing at how you're both laughing and can't watch it. Oh, it's and ridiculous. I just, uh, yeah, it's a terrifying one, and it's absolutely ridiculous. And I was like, I don't know if I need to see two or three. Two is worse. They still sort of keep it light, though. 
I think I've seen two as well, actually. To an extent, but yeah, three has only just come out, so I've been intrigued to see it because I just, I do just want to see how much worse they can get. But I did like twenty minutes, and I was like, <laughs> I'm good for tonight. I'll come back to this. Am I good to you the night? Yes, I am. Exactly. But um, clip three, wrong trouser. Indeed. Clip three of seven, so we probably want to get a move on. Gromit in box, spying on McG, stirring suspenseful music. The penguin is measuring something. What can it be? He extends the tape measure up to the window silt ledge and does something like a zip up to the window. He measures the width and the height of the window before elevating the tape back down, but Gromit has seen everything like. But Gromit's hiding in a bag of Metabix dog food, just his eyes popping out, and the penguin clocks him. Gromit is in a Metabix bag, but the penguin, eventually after checking at the bag, continues to walk. Phew. Yes, the penguin has definitely seen Gromit, but simply does not care. In a oh, similar way so? to Philip. Yeah, Philip living with the family, feeling no threat from them, is similar to Feathers in this situation, feeling no threat from um, Wallace or Gromit. And that's essentially his down both of their downfalls, except Philip doesn't have a downfall in this movie. Um, <laughs> he wins. He does. But the Penguin's downfall especially is underestimating his um, lodge lodge renters. Yeah, he's, um, he's wigging over lords. Exactly. This scene was like an additional, like there's a lot, it goes on for like two and a half minutes basically of like very sort of slowly building up what he's doing. And this is like, yeah, this is the first in like, not implication, but like proving Gromit right. Yes. He's, um, this is the first time that it, it's not just him being like a, a bit of a dick. He is actually up to something. He became a lot and, of a dick. Exactly. But yeah, I do think the trousers was just a coincidence that they were in the house. Okay. And he happened to be uh, staying in, which is very lucky for Feathers. What was he trying to rob again? A big diamond, I think. There's no diamonds in Wigan, lad. Well, there isn't now, is there? I don't know. No, did they not get no. it back at the end? Yes, they did. But they probably shipped it to Lee straight away to, for safety. Keep um, it safe, lad. Keep it safe in Channel Hall. Exactly. But no, I would say that um, he seems quite cautious as well in this one, Feathers. He seems to be looking around a lot and more... In broad worried daylight about it. as he measures the window in, well, yeah, in broad daylight on Wigan Town Centre Street. It is sort of a bit of a paradox in that he could have just... He seems cautious and aware of his surroundings and a little bit iffy about getting caught, yet he chose to do it in the middle of the day. Exactly. Um, and Gromit, again, just, just a lot of coincidences because it's only 28 minutes long. Um, Gromit just happens to be sat in a cafe. And Feathers walks past, and that's how he gets into this sort of... Um, maybe he was already following him, actually. And the, the cafe was all part of the plan. I think um, so. But it's it's fun to see that both of these characters just have a goal. They have, they have one set goal. There's nothing really to branch out from, unlike the other stars of stage and screen. Like, Creed had many goals. Loretta had zero goals. Yes. Some people were as whereas Black Phillip's goal was to corrupt Thomas in Soul to Witchcraft, and Feathers and McGraw's was steel diamond using mechanical trousers. Exactly. To be honest, we could get down to two words, steel diamond. Yes. Steel diamond, make witch. Steel diamond, corrupt Thomas in Soul to Witchcraft. I don't think, would you think that was actually about Philip's goal, to corrupt her soul specifically? Maybe, yeah. She, out of the family, is the most witch. Witchy. Um, right age, yeah, like, right, right like, genre. Yeah, like typical, your bog standard witch. Oh, so yeah. maybe there is something in that where it has to be a certain, you know, like a girl of a certain age and it has to be a girl. And that's yeah. why he needed to get rid of the rest of the family by means of manipulation. I guess so. And there's also a theory, I guess, that she'd gone mad all along and she did it all. This is just. Oh, yeah, but you yeah. could put that theory. There's also the theory that she's a modern woman in a coma and it was all really? a coma dream. No. Clip three. However, Penguin is um, Penguin is caught, but again, not particularly. Yeah, I don't think, I think he's realised Gromit is in that bo box. I think Aye. it would be dumb to assume that he didn't see him. I just don't think that he thinks it's a problem at all. He's at this point as well, Gromit's already out of the house, so he's already um, top dog or top penguin, yeah. if you will. That's so just why not... I think McGraw's super good, because he... Um... Hubris. 
Exactly. He's just so arrogant and just, just he just it seems to be like, I'm going to steal this jewel. I'm going to get rid of it. He just says, I'm going to do something. And then he does it all. And um, he's super cool and laid back. Even at, even at the end when he's on a train shooting people, he's still doing it in a kind of nonchalant penguin way. It is true. And so sort of both of them do this thing where they just let the other characters manipulate each other by doing sort of, not a lot themselves, just sort of doing things that imply, imply, um, you know, there's room for interpretation with their actions. So right. Gromit could go back and Gromit could go back and say to Wallace, you know, I saw him measuring these windows or whatever. I don't yeah. think he can talk. And Wallace would say, oh, don't be silly, lad. Put wood in all, etc. That's um, what Ralphie would say as well. Like Ralphie and Wallace right. are very similar. They're, Ralphie and Wallace are more similar than Philip and the Penguin. True. Who is Gromit the witch? Gromit's a dog. Gromit is a dog. <laughs> that is a junk. Gr um, the closest Gromit character in the Vivitch is the mother because she's kind of a believer and she's nice and she's pure. She's not nice. She's terrible the whole way through. I mean, I don't mean nice in that sense. I mean, she she's not corrupt in that sense. I, yes, I agree. She's um, puritanical, uh, not that that means her actions are, are positive, but she's a believer and she's puritanical. Exactly. Yeah, the animals just sort of do their own sort of actions that could be implied and then they just let the humans manipulate themselves and then they reap, the, re reap the rewards of that. Give me enough rope, lad. Clip four. Ralphie looking out into the white sky and it scared the shit out of me yesterday when i had this clip on and i had my headphones in and i did not expect it and that stab about a second in i yeah. jumped out of my chair it it's scared the, it scared the shit out of me and then i tried to like go back because I, so I tried to just play it quieter and i actually made it louder and so the second time it was <laughs> it almost made me feel sick um, as Pip twats Ralphie in the guts and Mrs. Ralphie is screaming in the shed with dead lambs all around her, that is a hell of a string stab, I say. Black Pip got Ralphie right in the stomach. He's down uh, uh, He's down on his knees, but Pip just stands there looking at him, going, going mad on his back legs and lording it over Ralphie. Blood coming out of Ralphie's mouth. Uh, that has happened in a lot of films. It's spilling on his shirt. Corruption, thou art my father, says William Ralphie as he falls. Pip just runs right full whack at Ralphie to finish the job and smash him into the fence. And Taylor Joy is screaming in a Yorkshire accent. Ralphie is knocked into the firewood and Pip trots away like it's an out. What's he going to look like with the chimney on him? Exactly. The, um... I also had that little, I found some kind of weird, it was just called Black Phillips Revenge, and it was like a 20 second clip, and it's just that. Yeah. But then when he, when he stabs um, Ralphie, it just starts playing No, 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 by Girls Aloud, and yeah. just repeating the repeating and being like, doing this sort of like, getting stabbed in the gut motion. Oh yeah. And I found it very funny. This is the funniest witch scene, <laughs> other than the bit where it terrified you at the start. Oh, I yeah. think this is just contextually uh, quite funny. Of Philip to do, considering how he spent the rest of like the the first two thirds of the movie, yeah, acting in the shadows and manipulating the children. This is very Feathers McGraw of him. He, he just comes straight out, doesn't he? It's like you know what? I'm just gonna kill the dad. I'm just gonna get that. Some. I'm just gonna get it done now. Like things have taken more of a turn because at this point they've been locked in the shed. Uh, Anya Taylor Joy and the two little fat children. Yeah, <laughs> they've all been locked in the shed together. A witch has arrived. And done like like the real. I don't. That's the scariest bit to me when they uh, are in the shed at the end and they see the actual witch. The old she, witch, because they've seen yeah. the young witch earlier, right? Yeah. Um. But they do the very like, and it's very like Disney Snow White. Yes. But horrifyingly like she's real. Temp she's tempting, right? So she's trying to tempt the young lad. I think she's just like sucking blood out of one of the other goats. All right. Point, well, at the very end. The young um, witch or the old witch? Oh, sorry. The old witch is very much like the old Snow White Apple witch. Oh, like. yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's a fairy tale but, element. Yeah, but she's very, very witchy and it works um, oh, yeah. super yeah. well. But then, yeah, you don't see the two young kids after that. And um, all the other goats have now been killed. I, I think that witch has just eaten all of the goats. The other two kids have gone. Um, is it a reveal? Is this kind the reveal that Black Philip is actually malevolent and up until then he's just been a goat? Is this the first time he actually does something that is clearly intentionally evil? 
Yes, but also you could look at it from the sense of it's still quite an animal thing to do because he was doing it earlier. It, like, okay, yeah, yeah. He was, he was sort of, and it also this could have just been the actual real life goat improvising from the sounds of things. Um, but yeah, they've already had this little like standoff where he grabbed him by the horns and threw him into the pen. So there's just every chance that kind of similar to Chief Wiggum when he's got the the hounds in the back of the police van and they all seem really angry and he says, yeah, I've been, I've been starving him, teasing him, singing off key. And he lets them out and they all just immediately attack him. It could is, be very similar to that. Is but, there any sort of reveal or do they basically tell us every time to, like, they show us this and then we find out that Black Phil has been talking to the kids before we hear him, right? And we, we, I guess the trick is that we don't really think it's going to happen. That's the, the line, right? You, you you know that Philip's an angry goat, but you don't necessarily expect him to actually talk and yeah, it's hear th- him. It's that sort of, I'll enjoy this a lot in supernatural films where they sort of feel so real that it's very unexpected when something supernatural happens. Yeah. Like, the entire way through, like, I suppose, actually, like, when you see, the only thing up until this point is the witch, which has been established as a supernatural thing, because you see her hand get old yeah. when she's um, grabbing the boy. But in terms of the goat, nothing supernatural. You could you could rule everything the goat does, everything Philip does, up until he speaks at the very end, could be could be logically goat behaviour. Yeah. So it's only when he actually speaks that it becomes um, obvious. But, uh, until that point, you could still very much just believe that the kids are just being kids and saying that they're talking to a goat, and it's all... That could have easily worked the same way. At the, there was nothing... If they'd gone down the route at the very end of the film and saying, oh, no, he is just a goat and he doesn't talk, that would have also made sense. There's nothing that happens earlier that you can't just rule as being a goat. Well, However, no, in many ways... As I say, everything Feathers does is very non-penguin adjacent. Sure. There's no oh, yeah. time we would think he's just a penguin. No, no from but the start, he, comes he is just a penguin, though. So there's a way that if, if you cut the scene out where Black Phillip talks... In a way, it would make it more ambiguous, right? And so the you don't you would not have to cut more than a minute or two out of that movie to make it very ambiguous. So you cut the scene where the witch actually arrives in the shed. You maybe cut the ring at the end where, where and just have her walking into the forest and not see the actual fire. Um, and I then think you, you cut Black Spillick speaking, and suddenly it becomes very, very ambiguous. Yeah, I think by literally just cutting out the bit where she says. Um, can you talk? Well, we'll look at it in a minute, and then she turns around. They could have cut it there before he says anything, and then just cut back to the goat leading her into the woods and joining the witches. Exactly and even right. That would have left it more. Oh, did he speak to her? But I think the best part of the film is when he speaks. I think that's like the the scene of the movie. So I'm glad that they didn't cut it in this instance, and because it's still ambiguous in a sense of. Like, all the stuff we've discussed, like, how long has this been going on for? Is it specifically her? You know, what what facet of Satan are we talking about? Is it Satan? Is it... It could just be a, another sort of witch recruiting who can possess animals. You know, there's a bit earlier on as well where there's a rabbit that they shoot at, and mm. the gun backfires, and it's a very weird black rabbit. And it's just implied as well that that is also um, witch-adjacent. So it's possible that... Um, yeah, this forest is full of witch animals that are ready to do the bidding, and maybe Philip is the most... Like in Game of Thrones, when they can like turn into the animals, but this one's been doing it so long that they've achieved speech. Like Avatar. The idea... So in the end, she walks into the forest and all of the witches are there. The idea that... I'm assuming that's not true of every forest and every part of the forest. So it could just be that the place they settled unluckily um and i don't know if it shows you in the film why they chose it it could have actually been set up from the start that it was a a beautiful tempting place um like almost like a trap right from the start yeah that would make it reusable as well for just passing families um i'm under the impression that witches just in general can move their homes in a sort of um once again, let's talk about Lost. Like the cabin on Lost, when it can, it just moves. 
of its own accord around the island. Oh, yeah. And so you think they can, like, magically move their homes? Yeah, or that their homes are some kind of, you know, like, they can make a makeshift home very quickly where they are via witchcraft. Like nomad, nomad witches. Yeah, and they can move stuff. So they just sort of go where the potential is. But yeah, also the house being a trap works because I'm sure they go there because of the, yeah, like essentially the potential of it. Like the land around and the crops maybe already being there. There's some things that are a, a significant draw to this house. That's what I mean, right? And if it is right next to a place where the... Because the witches, yeah, you, you're right, maybe they can move, but there are sacred places and, and that the witches would, in stories, most likely frequent. They, it's not a random choice of place. Yeah, I think a lot of it would depend on, which again, I think is left ambiguous, whether they stumble upon the goat in this area like and that was a like because they have a lot of animals on this farm yeah. or several but they don't seem to have them at the start when they leave so they must acquire i don't know you just can't see them well um, they, they sell the cop right so there's clearly traders and stuff like that and that's that again is you know we talked earlier about whether she had a chance to get away you would imagine that there were trading posts by where she could have as a as a healthy young woman would have been accepted. Yeah, I agree. Actually, yeah, he could have. She could have said no to the talking Satan goat. But 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 temptation, and that's the whole thing, isn't it? The whole idea, and that's you know possibly, and someone's probably dug into this way more than I. But the very fact that they left, that they were too puritanic, they were too good, um, <coughs> was actually a, a sin of pride, and so already they were like sinners. And right, but it's been picked up by the Dark Lord. Yes, and yeah, I think um, sort of dismantling somebody who is that into God probably helps. Oh, with yeah. Well, he tried it on Jesus, didn't he, in the desert? Satan went for the, the big guy. He went straight into Jesus and was trying to tempt him. All that kind of shit. Straight for the big leagues. Do you want some yeah. butter, Jesus? Yeah. He drank some butter. Well, he did. He basically gets said the idea, didn't he? And the, the point being that butter is what for somebody who's just starving. That idea of such a rich thing that that's the equivalent of like takes Jesus to the top of the mountain, says you can have all this desert, no one but bloody pile of desert. You can build stuff on it, Jesus. Jesus, I've noticed you've been wandering around for thirty-two days now. You seem to be living undeliciously. Here's one. What's, what, you what's your best? What's your best reveal in a horror movie? Um. I don't... The, the first one that came to mind then was the, the first Saw. It's got a pretty good reveal yeah. end. Um, I like the movie The Visit, actually. Ooh, the Shyamalan one. It's, it's a Shyamalan one. Agatha All Along is in it. Really? Um, that one worked quite well. I enjoyed that one. I won't I won't give it away so you can watch the movie. But, um, my A couple of my favourites, obviously The Wicker Man, the first time I saw that, uh, you know, and everyone after that's like, it's so obvious, you know what's coming. It's like, I, I really didn't. The first time I saw that in like the early 90s, I actually did not know the ending and it was actually a shock for me. That's how that's how daft I am. Uh, Rosemary's Baby, where they do actually reveal that it's uh, Satan's baby. And um, one of my favourite ones is, is um, so Kingdom Hospital, not the... Uh, Riget, oh, yeah. Riget. Told you this one before, I think, right? I think it came up in the Boabi cast. Where they're just, do, yeah, they're doing a, a, a word association game and it starts off. And the guy kind of knows that the person he's playing against is possessed or the devil or something. And the, the hospital's built on a, um, the hospital's built on a, uh, basically on the the, the, um, the entrance to hell or something like that. Oh, my. Um, yeah. I might be thinking of something else. What's the thing where it ends and it's just all been like an autistic boy's dream? Oh, no, that's um, that's sent elsewhere. That's just a... Um, that's what I thought you meant. Ever. No, so this is called uh, Rigel, and it's um, it's basically a hospital that's... I think it's... Is it Norwegian? Swedish? Norwegian? Um, um, it's built on top of a... Um, it's Lars von Trier, and it's it's um, built on top of the the entrance to hell um and basically the guy knows that it is um that there's that the guy he's playing against in this word association game is either the he's the devil or a demon or he's possessed and so he starts off by um 
just doing a word association game of really uh, like um innocuous words like you know hat and house and things like that and um reget yeah yeah and then um, the kingdom it's called in english and he and then he just oh, halfway through he says something like satan and the guy goes my lord and then it just like switches and just the the whole tone of it instantly kind of like switches the whole thing and it's one of the best reveals where it's like ah oh, yeah and um absolutely like spine tingling when it happened it was just set up from uh yeah it's almost out of nowhere it's um very nice. good that took me a very long time to say that but that's fine it's our podcast isn't it it is our show yeah that's a good one uh inside number nine has um has got me quite a lot of times now all right yeah in terms of good reveals because sometimes you'll think you've got it and you've not which is always good um, they do a lot of those right these are all the kind of all often a twist in the tale um tales of the unexpected yeah. kind of thing almost every episode has some kind of like twist or like plot shift but some of it, it sort of depends where they come in the episode but a lot of them do sort of catch you off guard which is good mm. um but in terms of like spooky horror ones a lot of the horror stuff i've seen i already sort of like knew of it like all the horror anyway yeah uh, and a lot of the new stuff doesn't often get like get get you you seen hereditary yeah that kind of there's a not really a reveal but an it's unexpected... a bunch of small reveals right where you're like oh this is i've got it now and then you're like no no you've not there's some other like more and more bizarre twists yes i think the best in unrelated but the best uh jump scare reveal or bit is in the movie insidious i don't know if you've seen that one i have yeah, yeah. it just happens it like happens in the middle of a story it happens in the middle of someone telling a flashback story yeah. about the night before, but the actual jump scare bit happens just in the daytime in the kitchen, like in the middle of a very normal conversation, and it's very terrible. That's that's the one that I remember. Okay, really, really getting me. Nice. So we are talking Halloween, so that's good. Even though that yes. kind of spaceship thing at the beginning doesn't isn't scary. Um, clip five. Yes. Wrong trousers. Penguin with chicken hat has remote control in fish wallpaper bedroom. It's definitely not legal, says Wallace, as he comes through in his automated pants. And the penguin is not dressed convincingly as a chicken. Through the window, you can see the DW Stadium in the in the nighttime. Chicken penguin pulls the disguise off and Wallace is shocked. It's you, he explains in fish wallpaper room. Get me out of these trousers. He is backed in his pants in the wardrobe. Stands on wardrobe. This wardrobe is really nearly new. What is your plan, Black Penguin? McGuffin drops the remote control and picks up the huge diamond and puts it in the sack. Wallace protests pointless from the wardrobe. He doesn't normally um, curse, but these are trying times. I'll give you what for you, Tyke, he says. Penguin heads for the door. Gromit is there menacingly looking at me with a rolling pin. He bangs it on his hands. Get out, Penguin. He probably thinks, but Penguin simply pulls a gun on him in a Wigan Terrace house. He beckons Gromit to the side, and then he waddles out. Yeah, beautiful scene. Um, I f it's it's great. I didn't know Wallace was from Wigan until like I definitely I only knew that in the last like five or six years. Um, I didn't know that as a child watching these, and it's funny just watching them back here. him. So like, it's proper not good. This Aye. like whatever he says, which is a uh, which is a lot of fun. I've um, a fucking clamp me. I feel like Feathers has absolutely no fear of anything going wrong. He is very in control of the situation. He's very, um, yeah, sociopathically emotionless for it. Like, Wallace has done nothing but good for him. I know that he didn't like Gromit from the get-go and they had their little thing, but he is now just, like, he has no sort of, like, issue turning against Wallace either. No. And um, the funniest bit is pulling the gun. Oh, yeah. It's very, that, that's very unexpected in this claymation you know, like 90 circumstance. That is something that did genuinely catch me off guard when I saw and it. It's. Um... I wondered whether it was in the Indiana Jones reference because you know, in, in the first Indiana Jones movie, the guys kind of swinging the sword around and and stuff, and um, and then Indy just pulled out the gun and shoots him. But I yeah. don't think it's that. It could be. I just thought it was sort of doubling down on how bad Feathers is. Like he's not a part of this claymation world really he is a, a, he's an actual villain and he will he will and does try to shoot them both several yeah. times until he not until he stops and has a change of heart just until he has run out of bullets <laughs> which is fantastic stuff from him 
Um, yeah. He's just a, a, a merciless villain, and that is exactly what uh, ties him, makes him a perfect partner for, for Black Phillip. Exactly. There, there is no mercy. Um, ironically, the no girl. it's called Mercy. She is at this point gone. Um, yeah, fun fun scene. These are the two, we've just covered the two funniest bits, which is this the gun pulling, and after um, when all the logs fall on Ralphie and Black Phillip just leaves. As he just. Like, he just trots off, doesn't he? Like that, that's very animal esque as well. Like he just trots off to the next thing in like a. He doesn't leave quickly, and he doesn't leave suspiciously. He just trots off like a goat. That's that. Um, unlike Penguin McGraw, who is um, now got both people in the cupboard with a gun pulled on them, and he has no um, he has no issue showing his villainy either. Like earlier on, when he was sort of looking around to make sure no one was catching him, that was that was just so the plan would work. It wasn't out of any sort of um, guilt or shame. He knows what he wants, and he's going to get it. He doesn't care who gets in the way. One thing that connects both of these, although of course we know that Philip is is Satan, but um, we have absolutely no reason why either of them doing any of this stuff. No, just evil. Like I evil imagine he wants the diamond. Yeah, he wants the diamond so he can be rich. I don't think there's any sort of We've not gone into a Thanos or like modern day. Let's um, let's explore why the villains are doing. Let, let's, let's make it sympathetic. Villain. Let's have some sympathy for the penguin. Yes, it's not that. Ooh, it's ooh. not that for either of them, ooh, and that's ooh. yes. Which is often how you get the best villains. Sympathetic villains are great, but nine ooh, times out of ten, they don't end as a villain. No, you become an anti-hero or even worse, a hero. Yes, Loki. Um, Loki, Loki hostility. Precisely. Clip six. The best one. The Vich and Pip. A.T. Joy, great accent, says, Black Pip, I command thee. I, I, I summon thee or something to speak to me. She doesn't command, I don't think. She, she, but she I encourages she him. What's that? I think she does command. Maybe I'm All wrong. Right. But... Maybe. I command you to speak to me. Speak as thou dost to Joanna and her mercy. Does thou understand my English tone? Answer me. She turns as if nought is going on. And then, what does thou want, lassie? It's Ralphie. What can you give us? What can you give us? It's dark and mysterious. Would thou like to taste the butter? Drop a butter. Now margarine and out. How about a pretty dress with butter in pockets? She's intrigued. You've got her, Pip. You've hooked her in. And then there you are, the best line. Possibly the best line in all of cinema history. <laughs> Would thou like to live deliciously? Yes, she pauses. She is well up for it. And then he follows up unnecessarily. Would they like to see the world? I mean, that's, that's, I'm not sure. Where that from. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to fly? Would you like to go to? Do you want a Maybe. pointy hat? Do, would you like a, a cat that's proper nice, but can also do tricks and like, I've already said I'm on, do, I'll do it. Would you like, <laughs> like a broom, but a good broom, but can fly and play quidditch and like, I've already told you, I mean, I'll do it. Do you know, like, on um, on calls when they say, like, this call will be recorded for training purposes? Yeah. It could be similar to that in that he's just got to... He's trying to whittle down what what three things will um will be, like, his best openers for the next witch. He's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to give you a list of, like, which would you would you rather have, butter or a car, etc. And he's just... Would you rather have it. butter or four cakes? Would you, rather have, would you rather have a stick of butter... Or a new cat with big wheels. I kebab. Would you um, rather have a deep fried chicken or some butter in the shape of a clown? <laughs> <laughs> all he knows is they want butter. That's all. That's butter always wins. So he always opens with butter. He always opens with butter. I've got loads of butter. It's going off. I got to get rid of it. That's what he's doing. He's not going to. He doesn't need any more witches. He's... The best scene ever. Uh, do you, see, do you see a? Do you see a book? Yeah, I see a book. Go on, sign that book. All right. <laughs> but I can't, I can't write my name. I'll help you. I'll help you. Take well, you've not, even, you've not even got hands. You've just got hooves. Oh, well, I'll change it to human form. Why are you not just in human all the time? <laughs> I like being a goat. Do you see when I battered your dad? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Why would you do that? I just, I've had enough of him. Wanted to fuck, ram him into wood sh wood shelves. Actually, I didn't mean for kill him though, because I, 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 I was actually I was just messing. <laughs> oh, Philip, we'll see you again. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we will see you again. This was um, yeah, this scene especially works very well the first time you watch this. 
Uh, oh, yeah, I took yeah. a lot of the pauses out as well just for the clip, but it's it's like double the length of this in terms of her saying something and then there being like a 20 second pause in between every like response. Oh, yeah, it goes it's, on for ages. Yeah, it goes a bit quicker, but there is a very good... It leaves it just long enough where you're like, oh, this guy is not going to speak to her. Yeah. Is this frozen? Is this is this, is this this video frozen? Oh, no, he said um, something. Why did he say I missed it then? Remind the that. creepiest bit is there's a little bit when you can see, when the rumbling and the bells happen. Oh, yeah. You can see the hooves become like feet. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Through. I couldn't, couldn't get light enough. I switched up my lightness all the way, the contrast, oh. but I still couldn't get... I'll see if I can get it, but yeah, you see, you sort of see the the change in a way, and um, it is a good question why he why he appears in goat form if he has a human form. Probably easier for him actually to infiltrate a family as a goat. Oh, easy! Then, He's uh, tempt is it temptation, a, isn't it? A traveling man who looks looks and sounds like Satan. <laughs> um, yeah, this is his, this is his payoff for the long con of this entire family. Uh, He's. I think again, just maybe not specifically her, but she fit the categories he needed for a witch. So, I'm a bitch. you know, let's have let's try our luck here. Um, yeah, living deliciously, great, brilliant, great dialogue, absolutely brilliant. Um, clip seven, it's vague, it's vague enough to uh, sell the dream as well. She can just decide what that means and uh, oh yeah, go from there. So one thing that we just skipped over the bit where he does have a book. I don't know if the book's been there or long ago, like whether it appeared. I was somewhere. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have always, like, if physically that book's always been there or it's a magic book. But anyway, I just imagine it was a magic book. Yeah, which is fair enough at this point, right? The ghost's just been talking and he's turned into a human. So a magic book. Yeah. So that's not, that's not, nobody's, if you're still on board, you're not questioning that bit. And um, exactly. she's, she, he, he says, remove that sift, get them off, love. Take them off, love. It's like, makes her get naked, right? And then, so she's got like. Not, not that butter, the one at the bottom. Big, has, he got, has he got blood all over her chest? And she's like, can't write my name. And she says, I'll guide your hand, love. Oh, you're my <laughs> wife now. Uh, can't say that anymore. Um, clip seven. Um, Ron Crowder and Gromit is chasing him all over the shop. The penguin's off. He slides down the balcony onto a train. Gromit is there to catch him, but the wardrobe comes down. There is exciting chase music from B. Walsh. Penguins letting off bullets all over the shop. Gromit has lampshade on his head, and they are riding on a toy train. He's about to escape through the cat flap. I ask, why does the train track go out of the cat flap? But Gromit changes the track, changes the points, and he goes back, and he's still in the house. Now Wallace clicks his way, kicks his way out the wardrobe, and he's on the train, and they're all living deliciously. Extreme chase scene in which Wallace fails to net the penguin, and Gromit is lying on the tracks, and they are going wild. Wild, Wallace grabs the train from under the penguin. Wrong trousers trip the train as the penguin flies through the air, and Gromit catches him in a milk bottle, of course. Brilliant ending, and then he is in jail. Blue jail. Yes, comeuppance indeed. He gets... um. The feathers in a bottle is very cute. Oh, yeah. This seems this theme would work great if this was not claymation. If this was just like any other media, but the fact that it's claymation is a uh, very impressive. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? That's Wallace. Oh yeah, um, I think it would be tricky to do this in live action. Yes, probably, probably more difficult. Do a to big get, the, get a penguin on the train instead of the, <laughs> shoot that shoot that gun. Um, when they do the Disney remakes of all the Wallace and Gromit ones. Oh yes, when they take the life out of them. Like they did with the Lion King one. No, that's great. It's even better. It's better than the original. Can't wait until they do the Black Cauldron. Exactly. They'll do them all. Uh, yeah, I like this a lot. It's just exciting. It's an exciting scene for a. Um, it, it's a good payoff. It's good. Feather still is not remotely phased by anything, which is great. Even no. when he's caught. Um, yeah, it's it's Gromit's scene though, in terms of it being Wallace and Gromit. Like Wallace really sort of doesn't provide a lot here he's just kind of gets in the way a lot um i imagine there's a second tra the train track going through the cat flap i imagine was always a plan b for feathers okay so i imagine he probably built that um again it probably would have benefited me to watch the scenes in between the scenes we're looking at not necessary but I did not do that um yeah he's He's not afraid. He he was getting out of this house with this diamond if he has to shoot both of these people, this dog and this man in their own home after welcoming him into it. Aye. And yeah, not not a shred of... And that's the only way it kind of works to have... You need the balance if he's going to be sort of that 
kind of cute and fun, he's going to have to be cold-blooded, quite literally. Yeah, like the teddy bear in Toy Story 4. Exactly, or the sheriff in Toy Story 2. <laughs> or the boy in Toy Story 1. Exactly, um, but not the baby in Toy Story 1 with the spider legs. Baby spider. That's ah, chicken spider baby. Exactly. Was it Philip and baby spider legs? If you want some butter. Uh, yeah, that's about it for Philip. He, um, It's a great scene, it's exciting. Doesn't teach you anything about him, but it's nice to see him. Are you still referring to him as Philip? Oh yeah, sorry, Feathers. He um, He's competent. He's as competent as can be in this situation. He gets caught um, just because Gromit out-competences him slightly. But it's yeah. also a bit of luck. Like, if that bottle hadn't have landed in his hands, he would have landed on Gromit and just simply mauled him there and then. He would have taken his gun and it would have and it would have been goodbye, Gay doggy. Bomb. Goodbye, exactly. exactly. Goodbye, I yellow brick. Goodbye, yellow, yellow brick Gromit. Gromit. Clip eight. The final clip, uh, necking A.T. Joy. Naked A.T. Joy is wandering in the forest with Pip rambling behind him. She sees the witches having a bonfire. They're whirling their hair around and everything. Yeah, looks like a laugh. This is a nice little wrap-up. This is, uh, again, Philip directly. He's back in goat form now as well. He's gone back. So maybe there's got to be some kind of either preference or time limit to this uh, human form. Time limit. There's no time. The devil doesn't have a time limit on when he can take goat form. He's doing it. He's doing it out of pure choice. <laughs> like when Dwight uh, comes up with that that hell fantasy, and he's still the co-owner. He's still <laughs> like the, he's still the co-manager. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I just think it must be must be a preference. Um, four legs are better than two. Exactly. Yeah, yeah twice as many. Kind of a, more of a happy ending than for uh, feathers. Definitely. In, um, in there's, this a, there's a suggestion that the idea is um, that there's some underlying feminist kind of reading of it, but I don't know if Eggers has actually ever seen this. You know, she's in, she's trapped in this family where she has absolutely no uh, freedom and probably no future, and um, sh she is given this form of escape and freedom, and she becomes this wild, uh, wild liberated woman, but. The the thing that undercuts that is that they do some really bad stuff like murdering babies. So it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know yeah. how much I buy into that bit. No, I could see the the allegory of like somebody dangerous coming in and taking away, like taking you away from your family life because there's no um, you see no prospects there. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of you know, like you say, rejecting it and going to the next town for help. Um, but I think it's just more. Yeah, she. Witches are women, but in this circumstance, if, if Philip had offered this to Jonas, or probably probably not William, but, you know, it wouldn't have been a... It's not... It's not Butter isn't a female-only indulgence. Oh, God, no, lads love butter. Exactly. So, um, I could see it from that side also, but obviously witches are women, so it's going to be inherently... It's a bit of a stretch, I think. Female. But, um, whereas there is... Um, what's that one? What's that really kooky? Um, it's called a love witch, I think. Um, that's definitely straight up feminine empowerment with a very much tongue in cheek. It's like a seventies, not parody per se, but it, you know, it's made in the style of a seventies kind of like um movie, um, like an exploitation style movie, and um, yeah, that's full on kind of um feminist, like um. Yeah, the, the, the witch as, as a powerful female. Very funny. Very good movie, actually. Have you seen that one? I have not seen this one. I'll have a look at that. Yeah, it's worth um, watching, for sure. I think, yeah, all witches depicted are somewhat inherently earthy and inherently female. Like, especially the Buffy witches are all very, you know, like, it's very female power-based as opposed to just being power-based. But it's also rooted in earthly stuff, so... Yeah, yeah, historically, you can't really from. take it. You can't really separate it from that idea that uh, you know it was tied in with um, women's power and or lack of historically. So yeah, precisely. So um, yeah, there's, there's also nothing. There's also nothing to say that Feathers McGraw is not female. Exactly. There's no information about that, um, as far as I know, anyway. I don't there's know how you tell male and female penguins apart. Yeah, me neither. How they hold a gun, maybe. Well, there's an assumption he's male because of his uh, stereotypically violent and aggressive behaviour, but, you know, who knows? Let's not stereotype too much. The only person that uh, 
killed and wore a baby in this film was a woman in either of these movies. Well, she had her reasons. She wanted to um, fly that night. Confronting the ethereal void, but that's enough of that anyway. So come on, two six. Um, let's. This spaceship's taken on a dark, unsettling tone as we are floating cautiously towards the foreboding chamber. The walls are shimming with eerie light, and heavy energy fills the air. Oh my goodness. Uh, two eight. I forgot your name. I think we found it. One five. I think we found it. The ethereal cloud. Oh, it looks ominous, and that black material it's spewing. Thick, viscous black ooze dripping from the void, filling the air with a fail, a faint, acrid smell. Gulp. This is definitely not a fun play date. Oh god, the cloud. Oh god, the cloud's talking. Would you like to live delirious? No, not deliriously. De delight? No, not delight. What's the word? What's the word again? Oh, deliciously. Would you like to live deliciously? What? Did it just ask if we want to live deliciously? Um, two six. What? What does that even mean? My heart's racing. I don't know, but it sounds wrong, and it stinks of butter. Oh my goodness! I said, I said, I said, I said. Like, would you like to live deliciously? Oh my goodness! Yeah, we've already done that. <laughs> we've already done that. Should we have a look at some black pip media? Let's have a little mooch, a Funko. Yeah, Funko is the only character from the Vivich that was given his own Funko. Ralphie didn't that get one. Doesn't surprise me really, is the standout. There's a trailer aimed directly at Black Philip, actually. That was yeah. Like, a, a, a it, like selling trailer. the film to him? Yes, to you should watch it. It's just two minutes of butter being churned. Um, Delicious. It, it sells like Black Philip as the... Kind of un undercuts the idea of the witch itself being... Which is true, because the the titular Vavitch could be Annie Taylor-Joy. So exactly. it's not necessarily talking about the... The witch doesn't actually have to be the main villain of the movie. And no. that is clearly shown by the Black Phillip trailer. Uh, this is very cute. Kind of strange. Yes. I don't, I don't, oh, I, he's got an apple because of that kid throwing up an apple, but that was more witch-related than Phillip-related. He's got blood um, all over his horns and a really long beard. He does. He's quite cute. He is. Beard's a bit iffy, but... Amazon uh, Amazon um, customer said, I realised I could turn the head 90 degrees and the horns would be balanced, so then I could stand it without support. What a great design. Excellent, even scarier. A backwards-headed Black Phillip. Um, now I come back to Amazon and, see, Amazon and see the head is turned in the product image, though not 90 degree, degrees, which is what I had to turn it to. I <laughs> 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 praise indeed. I think, that's still, I think that's still related to the last one. I, I think so. So now I'm going trend. But there is a red bubble t shirt of Live Deliciously with the Black Phillip frolicking. Oh, yeah, that's quite a nice one. It's, um, it's one of those that you wouldn't get what it was unless you knew what it was. Um, yeah. Philip lends himself to this kind of um, kind of ironic reimagining. Yes, uh, yeah, that's fine. It kind of it, it looks a bit midsummery as well to tie exactly. into another horror film. That that so can be nice. cutified easily as well. Florence exactly. Pugh with a with a, so a big black, silly black dress. Exactly, and Black Philip got his own Twitter feed, uh, though I don't know if it's still up and running. It's just about butter. I love my squad. That is the last thing he wrote in 2016. <laughs> it's a picture of him and all his witches. It's not me, you guys. I'm alive. Thriving, actually. Bitches, I'm back. But it's, it, it doesn't... I don't know if it's officially Black Philip because he's talking a little bit more groovy, isn't he? Um, yeah, bitches, I'm back is something I can imagine him whispering, though. Um, bitches, I'm that's back. A, that's a good picture of... It seems to be a painted one of the younger girl, Mercy. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. The Goat Whisperer. To... Apparently it's called by George Macarena. Exactly. I'm sure I'm mangling his name and it's George Macarena. <laughs> so, I'm sure I'm saying this wrong, but it's George Macadamia. Exactly. George Macaroon. Um, my favourite thing about that picture is you can't tell if it's flames or if it's corn. 
that they are yeah. surrounded by, which is cool. And uh, Philip just looking, looking as as kind of demure and chill, chilled out as he does in the movie, which is cool. They both we haven't established that actually. They both are, have we? We said it both about them both separately, but they are both um, very calm characters. Yeah, we've not mentioned so much about Philip. We kind of have that he's just going about his business. This is the one maybe you've seen before, which is by Neiman's, which is a kind of um, Looney Tunes reimagining of BP. No video to go along with it, though. Oh, yeah, that's quite a fun one. I think I like the the most realistic art the best this week, strangely. Yeah. I think it's um, it's good. Well, this one's good. It's kind of a semi-realistic reimagining of just them heading up into the woods together. So I really like that one. Don't know who That's painted it. that one. That's cool, it's though, bit, right? Yeah, I like that. It's a bit like a Christmas card, but oh, uh, yeah. spooky. And uh, yeah, Philip and, and all of these, the horns on Philip have been uh, done very, very well and creepily. Like they are horns that would definitely kill Ralph, Ralph Innocent. Those horns are going to do some damage to the planet to Galactus in the corner. Oh, yeah. Year or if so. You're gonna, if you're gonna draw VP, you need to have horns and that beard. That's that's what makes him exactly. And the eyes, the incorrect eyes. And we've gone the completely other way. We don't like the taste of butter. Like super cute. That is a super cute one, but it is also the eyes are quite scary because they've done the goat goat eyes in human form. It's a little kid dressed in, in a black Philip costume, yeah. presumably the little boy. As that reminds me of Mercy again, the little girl. Um, They've done the you... ghost eyes though, even though BP didn't have ghost eyes, and that's how we knew he was the devil. I'm not going to do the eyes. Which yeah, would also suggest also... that the eyes, that, that um, the goat is not his usual form. Exactly. Seems so. I'll check the rabbit as well and maybe add a bit of a groggly poncho thing, but maybe the rabbit's got the same eyes. It's me, yeah. groggly poncho. Yeah, the rabbit definitely had the eyes. All right, all right, let's not take the peas. He didn't check the rabbit. He could check now, but frankly, so could you. I am gradually Poncho. Exactly. What a what a meta thing to do, the devil. Uh, as Christianity took hold in Europe, hers and rabbits so firmly associated with the goddess came to be seen in less favorable light viewed as familiars of witches or as witches themselves. Um, yeah, nobody's talking about the rabbit. We can see the subliminal message 003J. It lasts for a second. I had to That's slow down a bit. What's that? I thought you said my name, sorry. Oh yeah, you're two six. Um yeah, who knows? Encoding error. It's hard to say whether or not people um whether the rabbit itself is, is part of it, but uh I'll tell you who will know. Eggers. Chatbot. Yeah, yeah. Eggers will know all this. I'm very excited for his next movie which is coming out soon. He's Cinderella doing, uh, too. Exactly. Nosferatu. Nosferatu, yeah, of course, right? Remake it. Because the lighthouse was great. And that was that's yeah. the second one, right? The lighthouse is yeah, also proper grim and the the lighthouse though, for me, um and there's three or four films that do this, which are kind of historically relatively accurate. Then they throw in a wild psychedelic scene. I think we're talking about it somewhere else. So the one, there's the one called, I think the Viking that does it. And then there's a field in England and then this, and then um, the lighthouse does it where it's like 75% of the way in and it's like normal. And then some wild psychedelic scene happens for like five minutes and you, you don't really know what's going on. And I, I kind of yeah. like it, but I also think it kind of undercuts the, the kind of main power of the movie. It depends how useful it is. I like the ending of The Lighthouse with the light. Um, yeah. And I like that that's sort of way more ominous in terms of satanic creatures than the witch. Uh, I can't really remember much about the Northman. Or that's, the Northman. The one. that's the one, is it, right? Where he has the psychedelic kind of trip for like five minutes towards the end. Is it that Yeah, one? I don't yeah, I think I only saw that one once at the cinema. Which um, is Nicholas think... Nicholas Winding Reef or whatever his name is. Nicholas Winding Reefs. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was Eggers. No, 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 it's not Eggers. I think it's Eggers. No. Nicholas Winding Refn, and he did the one that I'm talking about, which is called... I think it's Eggers. Valhalla Rising. I think it's Eggers. Oh, I see. I'm on about... Um... There's one, called the Nicholson. There's one called the Norseman uh, with the Eggers did. Okay, uh, yeah, right. I think Nosferatu has been working on prior to all of these. It's obvious. The one that he wanted to do first, so it should be very good. Um, 
Oh, Have you ever seen the, the, the remake of Nosferatu? Not the original, but the, the Klaus Kinski Nosferatu. No, I've not seen either of them. That's bonkers. I've not seen all of that, but Clint Kinski's an absolute nut job in everything, right? But he's especially as Nosferatu. Excellent. Um, I have three things. Three things of interest to look up. That's good. That's good for a cast cast. What are they? Um, that's one that you just said. Yeah. And then the other two that will come back up when I start editing this. One of them was another movie. Oh, the I Love Vampires. I Love Witch. Oh, The Love Witch. Yeah, that's good. It's worth doing. And then there was something. Oh, the series. The, the Regal. The... Regal is, is great, actually. Um, all right, let's move on to a little bit of, of um, this art for this guy. So there's a, a, a Daigle. This is a, a legit one off the official site, actually. Oh, nice. Um, With his feathers in his jug, in his little uh, milk bottle, sorry. Yeah, and also out of it. Yeah, and he is surrounded by things that both Wallace and Gromit like a lot, which are jam on toast and cheese, Gromit. Um, I vaguely remember him may having some kind of toast or breakfast making machine, Wallace, so maybe that's a reference to this. I think that's I think how it starts, right? Isn't that how the very first one starts? Yeah, I don't really remember. They all kind of blur into one. I don't know if I've actually seen them all separately of each other, or I've just seen, like, chunks of them at different times um, 30 years ago it's madness my favorite thing about this one looking at it is there's a bit of jam on the second feathers mcgraw yeah that kind of looks like the chicken hat that's the intentional what it must be and there's a third feathers mcgraw in that oh yeah slice. exactly and there's, there's probably four or five more in there somewhere tiny ones microscopic and here's a, a well rendered by royal dragon art it's a it's a life living feathers mcgraw he has a quite like this. This would fit in. This is the Feathers McGraw I feel is closest to being friends with Black Phillip. Oh, yeah. Even just, not even just for the realism, for the actual, like, the colour choices in the eyes. Like, penguins can often, Feathers has a white face, I believe, as most penguins do, but they have chosen to put him in black face for this one. Odinum is an entirely black coloured penguin. He has a black face the whole time, you jackanape. Jesus Christ, you're 95 minute into this sheet. Get a grip. I am gradually poncho. Which, as we've not even discussed that, the, the, the very easy, you know, black and white. And you tell a joy is the, the white and oh, black yeah. fillet is the it, black. It's not in black and white, though, the, the Vivitch, though, is it? It's just a very bleak colour palette. Yeah, but it just in terms of, you know, again, back to Lost, everything has, you know, it's just bog standard. Black is bad, white is good. Yeah. So... Even Gromit being like the light beige coloured kind of dog works. Like if, if Gromit was a dark coloured dog and Feathers was an albino penguin, maybe things would have gone differently. Sure, you know, but for sure we don't we, we don't want to go for such load hanging fruit. Here's exactly. another legit product, which is an uh, an egg cup holder um, of Feathers. feathers I, like a lot. I imagine there's a lot of very good feathers merchandise to be honest out of all of our stars of stage and screen i'd say feathers mcgraw probably has the most merch really um, just from the basis of he's the most merchandisable if that's a word like if you lined up all of our stars of stage and screen now yeah um, the, the next closest one would be kettle philip jeffries in terms of something that people would act if you put them all in funko form yeah your three best sellers are probably creed feathers mcgraw excellent and um, what's his face from Twin Peaks as a kettle? Bowie. David Bowie is a kettle. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There's an actual, I think this is a real one. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks official and all the words are real. So it doesn't look like it's. Uh, this is where we're at in 2024. We, we see something that looks awesome and then we have to say, hold on, that might not be a real thing. Oh, yeah, I do that all. Like when I see Facebook stories or information about things or pictures, I check. The first thing I do now is check the hands. I watched a clip of a, somebody scoring a goal in football, and my initial thought was that's probably fake. And it clearly was just a clip from a football game. But the goal was so good, I was like, that's fake. It's like, no, it's, yeah, that's just a video of somebody playing football. That you know of. Somebody once told me. Yeah, uh, Shrek, it's a beautiful, beautiful I think Shrek's the missing link between Feathers McGraw and uh, Black Phillip. Quite possibly. It could be Donkey. Donkey's sort of more shaped towards both of them. He could be a good middle ground. Uh, Shrek's, Shrek's, too, Shrek one. Shrek's too big to be. I saw that the other day. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely merchandisable. What's this? What's this one? This is 
Um, Extra Feathers McGraw by Matthew Wells. I'm not sure of the of the background of this, but he's got lots of Feathers McGraws painted in different styles. Yeah, it's cool. It's sort of like a multiverse, like when all the Deadpools, all the Deadpools show up. Yeah. Um, I think my favourite. There's there's all kind of ones. There's a lot of them are just sort of cool patterns. But there's one that's got a little village on there. There's one at the back with something that is definitely a different character. Like that red thing. Mm. I think I'm going to give it to Chef Feathers as my winner. Chef Feathers, yeah. I believe that's him. Um... It's interesting that he's become a, a blank canvas for people. It's not the most obvious blank canvas. No, they, they could both work quite well as this blank canvas idea, actually. I'd like to see a, a, a double release, a two-pack, if you will. Of course. <laughs> Um, I also quite like the totem one. I think that's pretty cool. The totem feathers is pretty good. Yeah. So all in all, lots of great art about both of these characters, McGraw right. and BP. But, send, me that la- send me that last art and I'll get uh, groggily to say something about it. This last one. So this is not actually Black Phillip. This is one of the characters that possibly was a, an influence that's um, from um, uh, from H.P. Lovecraft. It's a character called the Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young, um, a dark, mystical ghost type character. And um, it's possible that that was an influence for BP. Because I haven't seen any anyone actually note down why Eggers decided to do this, this goat as Satan story. I mean, obviously, it's an obvious kind of... I think the goat. goat's... Yeah, it's the easiest option for us. Yeah, it's exactly. just an animal, isn't it? Yeah, of um, course. It is. Yeah, very cool. Um, the abomination it's... of abominations. But anyway, enough about that. The series hey, chamber is vibrating with the ethereal cloud. It's swirling shadows, casting an unsettling glow. Did it just say? Well, that's your line. We already did that. Did it just say, "Give me something delicious"? I don't think it did. I think it said, "Do you want something delicious?" I definitely did. What do you think that means? <laughs> I, yes, I can provide a treat from my special machine. Oh my goodness, it's flickering and tantalizing. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is terrifying. <laughs> it's whirring to life, creating a tantalizing aroma. Whoa, look at that. What's it going to make? I can't wait to find out. Beep, beep. It's a perfectly frosted cake, sparkling with colorful energy. There's nothing to be scared of here in this Halloween special. It's hovering gently, radiating a delicious aura. Snuggle closer. Enjoy. It's a gift from me to you. Oh, thank you. This looks amazing. Shall we try it? Absolutely. This is definitely for the best. Um, yeah, it's nice a cake for me and one for you, two six. Um, and the cloud over there is emitting a delightful hum. Taste the delight. It will bring us all closer together. It's a bit, you actually got a bit of a creepy voice there, um, Void. I can't help it. That's just how I speak. You know what? What if we keep this ethereal cloud voice as a pet? That's a brilliant idea, 2-6. It's finally we're fleshing out our characters. Um, what a, um, imagine all the adventures we could have together here at the at the end of the Trouble Belt. FIDB. I would love to be your pet. Together. I, I know it's a bit truth froggy, but I'm trying to make it a bit different. Together, we can explore the universe deliciously. All right, brilliant. What a beautiful turnout for a Halloween special. That's, I guess, the end of the episode, so we don't do songs on Sosas. We love you, Ethereal Cloud. We do. I'll, I, there will be a song. Brilliant. A whole bunch of songs. Just put loads of songs all the way through. I don't care. What's that, Ethereal Cloud? You have a beautiful singing voice. Let's hear it. <laughs> the end. I was going to say initially, I don't think this is going to be a long one once we battle barreled into the first clip in like 10 minutes, and here we are. Two hours, two and a quarter hours later. Yes, and it's all, all content based. Yeah, it's great content. I mean, obviously feathers is a good, good one, but we can't deny we really sunk our teeth into some BP. Exactly. I um, I also thought, oh, we're not gonna have much to say about this one. So I like it when they turn out to be opposite. I knew that. the Vivich would get us, would get our, our juices, our baby juices flowing. Exactly. You smell like. The taste of butter was the like an endless supply of counterfeit IDs and untraceable cash was the like a sneakily branded startup with no ethical dilemmas valued at a billion dollars.
Was thou like to know exactly what happened to your plane and every secret the island holds? Was thou like to finally be the queen bee and have a vampire with perfect cheekbones at your side? Was thou like a ship that never sinks, a crew that always obeys, and a stash of rum that never runs dry? Was thou like to understand the meaning of time and unlock the mysteries of every plane of existence and also to no longer be a kettle? Was thou like to be the most glamorous, desired woman in Quahog and outshine everyone at the drunken clam? Was thou like the pub full every night? No dafties and the best draught in all of Craigland. Was thou like the power to tempt even the purest souls and become the ruler of your own coven? Was thou like every precious gem in Wigan at your wingtips, no interference from pesky canines? A pretty dress. Was thou like to live deliciously? Was thou like to live deliciously? Was thou like to live deliciously? Deliciously, da 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 da, deliciously. Was thou like to live deliciously? Da 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 da, deliciously. Deliciously. Was thou like to live deliciously? Deliciously, da 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 da, deliciously. Was thou like to live deliciously? Was thou like to live deliciously? Deliciously.
peux-tu vivre délicieusement Délicieusement, du 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 que délicieusement voudrais-tu vivre délicieusement, de 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 de
taste of butter What's that like to live deliciously? Fluffy toenails Have you ever seen a black Philip with human bloody feet? It's not the horns, it's the pack bloody rodcast Bloody rodcast, rest in peace, big fish Larry! Oh, big fish Larry! Wabby pulls a silly face, Loretta smashed out of her bath Jonah sank another ship! It's him, it's bloody I am Philip's still a sodding kettle Harmony queen of vampires Cindy's probably still babysitting Jared's in an institution Creed's in prison Gave up on making it rhyme King of land and sea indeed Helen's a foo 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 bitch Life deliciously bitch You've earned it What's that like the taste of butter? 